Thank you. Last but not least, right? Yeah. Y'all still with us? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Come on. Let's, let's drive it home. We made it to two days of amazing knowledge sharing, right? Hey, let's give it up for Brain Exchange. Those guys put on a great event. Joe and I go to a lot of conferences, and these guys, for their second one, I mean, they're setting the bar. They really are. So we really appreciate them having us again. We did a case study last year. We're not going to be showing the same stuff. If you missed it, I'm sorry. I'd love to talk to you about it in the hallway. Um, we want to show new stuff. But my name's Todd Wynn. This is Joe Williams. We're with Rogers O'Brien Construction out of Texas. And uh, I want to start things off by showing you our office. This is our office. There's no desks, there's no chairs, there's only challenges. And that is why I can't emphasize enough why wearables have such an amazing opportunity and bright future in our industry. Our guys are constantly walking out to the project, it's changing day by day, sometimes that door's in, and then that one comes in the next day. Everything's changing every day. Steel's getting delivered. They're constantly having to access mountains of information. They're capturing hundreds of photos every day. And we don't want them to have to go back and forth to the trailer. So last year, when we came and spoke, we also shared some of our vision for the job site of 2025. We showed you the construction worker 10 years from now, and we challenged, what, what's that worker going to be wearing? What's going to be on his head? What's going to be, what, what, what kind of information and intelligence is going to be inside the hard hat of the future? How is it going to align that information for the user so that he can make decisions without having to go look it up, but rather it's provided him contextually based on where he is in the project during the schedule so that he can begin the work? And what about a safety vest? How about biometric monitoring? Our industry, it, it really, it shames me to say that we can't always send everyone home safe to their families. And that's absolutely unacceptable. Wearables have an amazing opportunity for safety in our industry. So Joe and I talked about these last year. We're not going to do that again. We wanted to tell you that Joe and I don't want to wait 10 years, right? We want this now. So we are definitely the definition of construction nerds. We're constantly tinkering, we're hacking, uh, we're doing anything we can to try to get, to bring this future to now. So such as working with a company out of Boston, Redpoint Positioning. So this is an RTLS system, that's real-time location system. So it's positioning where the worker is inside the building. This is a project in Dallas right now, a hospital. You can see this worker as he enters a controlled access zone. His vest gives him a visual notification that he's not supposed to be in that area. So we could use this for confined spaces under basements. We could use this for the leading edge of the building saying, you got to be tied off, man. So watching this again, you can see we're drawing on the map a controlled access zone. As the worker enters, it lights up. As he leaves the zone, the vest turns off. Right now, we're in very early trials with this technology, but it's really exciting for where we think it can take us. The daiquiri, we've heard a lot about that today. We're very excited with what they're doing. Um, we, we definitely think that there's a big opportunity to take a wearable and augment one that's already been accepted in our industry, in many of our industries, right? The hard hat for safety. But we definitely now think that we can also use this to provide intelligence to the user. We've had the fortunate pleasure to get to try a couple of Daiquiri's prototypes. This was one last year. Notice the cameras as two cameras on the front, two on the back, so kind of a 360 cameras. Also with a FLIR camera, thermal imaging, gives you that predator vision mode. It's pretty cool, right? It's also, it's also really attractive, Todd. Really, really, yeah. really attractive, right? Yeah. right? Well, they are making progress. We got to try another prototype this year. Uh, definitely looking a little more RoboCop-ish, a little, cool, little bit cooler. Um, they, they've made great strides, and we're definitely keeping up with those guys and what they're doing. But until then, until they can provide me with this fancy hard hat, I'm stuck looking like this <laughs> on my job site. 
Yeah, so, so even though Todd looks pretty dumb in this photograph here, um, he's actually wearing a pretty smart device on top of his helmet. It's, it's a Rika Theta S 360-degree camera. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but you can pick them up on Amazon for 350 bucks. And just with the push of a button and a funny sound, you get a full 360-degree photosphere of the entire room that you're in. And so these two fisheye cameras capture both of those spaces and, and make it a completely immersive environment that we can go back and review. And so recently, we put this to, to test on one of our job sites, and here is a job walk that, that Todd and I have done. Um, and you'll see uh, we're walking towards the hospital, uh, that little short guy kind of over on the left, that's me, and then the big guy holding up the camera, that's Todd. So um, this is the first time we had this camera out on the job site, so we expected you know, to get some funny looks, you know, some questions about you know, what's that giant thing on top of Todd's head. But I, I swear, we don't know the, the next person you're about to meet, but um, this was his reaction when he saw that. If we can get a little bit more volume, you'll be able to hear his reaction. How's it going? It's a 360 camera. That's awesome, man. It records a wow, photosphere man, of everything amazing. you see. I couldn't stop looking at it. It's yeah, crazy, man. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? It's awesome, boy. Technology, baby. Right? So, so I don't care what you hear. Our, our industry is ready for this technology, right? And, and guys like our superintendents who make this walk every single day, sometimes three, four times a day, they interact with, with hundreds of trade workers, with architects, with the owner, and they're having conversations. They're looking for things, as Todd mentioned before, that are changing. Uh, it's a very dynamic site. You can see as, even as we're coming up the stairs, here come some guys with some ladders who gotta step out of their way, which is pretty cool. But, but a superintendent can't always see everything that's going on around him. And so this 360 camera gives him a full view of everything that was going on when he did that walk. If he thinks back, you know, God, what did the architect say that I needed to do about that light yesterday? He can go back, review the footage, even look up in the footage at the light fixture. There's nothing that wasn't captured by the space. That's really the power of 360 degree video is that you can go back and watch it and re-experience it a different way every single time. Those stairs wore me out too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, that wasn't actual speed. It was a little slower than that. Right. So in addition to 360 degree video, we can also uh, capture 360 degree photospheres, as I mentioned. And so these are static spheres that you can go back and interact with. And here we are reliving a, a different job walk on the same campus. And uh, what we've done here is we've added some interactivity to it so that you can jump around from photosphere to photosphere, kind of relive that or, or go in a different direction. Um, we're using a software here called Hollow Builder. Um, you can jump on their website and, and uh, try that out for free. Um, but it allows you to, to organize and interact with these 3D photospheres. And so a feature they've recently added is the ability to interact with a floor plan. Um, and so you can go and look and see where all those spheres are located around your project and, and jump to any one of those uh, that you're particularly interested in. And here you can start to see the power that this does for the construction industry. As, as Todd mentioned, things are constantly changing. Here we've got studs being installed, mechanical systems being installed. We now have x-ray vision into our building. We can go back at any time and say, what's behind that wall? What's behind that wall? And you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how many times an inspector or someone else has come up and asked us to rip a hole in the wall to prove that we installed something correctly. And we have to damage our own work product just, just to meet compliance. And, so here we're looking, we're in a bathroom. You can see how tight it is, but we're able to capture, you know, all six surfaces with that 360 degree camera. It's definitely the evolution of photos and videos, right? We're looking at hardware, software, but even our media itself is evolving. Uh, but as Joe said, if we wanted to look into that wall right over there right now, we can't, which, which is unfortunate. In the movies, you ever see how they pull it, say, I'm pulling up the schematics to the building? That's fake. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> yeah, but with technology like this, we're getting very close. Uh, another technology that we are extremely excited about is here today, smartvid.io. We've been testing this on a number of different projects at Rogers O'Brien, and I can't tell you enough how excited we are. We're capturing all this data, right? And with these wearables, we're, we're just consuming more and more and more. But where does it go? Where are y'all saving it? Is it going in Dropbox? Is it going SharePoint? Is it going on a file server? See, for us, it was going in a file server for those just-in-case days. 
just in case we need to go back and prove that we installed that insulation in the wall, or just in case if the building does leak, God forbid. But that doesn't help us become better at what we do. We're capturing this information. We need to catalog it and learn from it. And that's what SmartVid does for us. What it allows us to do is upload all of our media. It indexes it with a tag library that you create. So you generate your own tags. It'll even listen to the audio in your video. And if you said, anytime I say the word insulation, I want you to bookmark that place in the video. It does that for you. So we're even using it for training in the company, but all of our media has a home now. But they're doing even more than that. Look at this photo for a second. This is an aerial photo of one of our job sites. There's a lot going on here. There's concrete being poured. There's rebar being laid. There's material being delivered, wood being framed, cranes moving, trucks arriving. Too much for one person to keep up with. But what if we didn't have to? What if, what if a computer could actually understand what was going on in here? So SmartVid is actually also doing some amazing things with machine learning, dynamic object recognition, and actually starting to understand what's in the media that we're capturing with these wearable devices. So take, for instance, that very bright green at the bottom left. That's exterior sheathing. It's very bright like that because we apply waterproofing membrane to make sure we covered it all up because we don't want the building to leak, right? Once again, that, that right there is 90% of our warranty calls, water intrusion. Water is our enemy in construction. So think now we can fly the drone. We can say, okay, SmartVid, anytime you see this color green, I want you to send me a notification because my waterproofer missed a spot. And then how about we automate that workflow so it sends him the notification and it tells him, hey, here it is. Here's a picture of the drone shot. Please go waterproof this. So here's SmartVid in action. I'm going to run a search on one of our projects. We're just going to search for heavy equipment. So photos that have heavy equipment in them. And we can see here it automatically filtered and now I can see an excavator. I can go find that piece of equipment, and I can go resolve the dispute I was having on when that equipment arrived and when it, when it left, when it, my rental dates. But what else would you search for? You see what this is doing? This is gaining us insights that we've never had available before. Right now, we've always just been just taking and all this, capturing all this data, and it's data exhaust that we haven't actually been processing. What else would you guys search for on your projects at your companies? Well, here's some terms we would definitely love to search for. We would love to say, hey, when was that crane on site? Or is everyone wearing their personal protective equipment? Are they all wearing hard hats? How about we have a no ladder policy? You're actually, I know that sounds crazy, but that's the greatest cause of injuries on job sites. And we're actually seeing more and more job sites that we're not allowing ladders. We allow scissor lifts and other forms um, to, to get elevated. But what about rebar deliveries? When was that steel? When did it arrive? So these are just some of the terms that we'd search for that we're really excited. So check out SmartVid if you haven't yet. But they're definitely building the YouTube of industry. And we think they're going to have a very large impact. Now, lastly... We wanted to talk about one more wearable. We haven't heard much about this wearable today. Whenever we say wearable, what do you think about? You think about Google Glass. You think about smart watches. You think about wearables that are shown here. But whenever Joe and I think about wearable, this is what we think about. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Can I get a yeah? <laughs> All right, cool, right? Human augmentation to where it truly does make the job easier. This isn't science fiction, folks. We thought it was a little further out than it is. We showed these, this video last year. This is exobionics. This is an exosuit with a bionic arm that's actually allowing this user to hold a 35-pound angle grinder out in front of them with one arm. That would not be possible without the assistance of that exosuit. It's passive, too. It's not motorized. That's all leverage and springs. So we, we thought this was still a little ways out, and then we found out it's not. Here's Joe. 
wearing an exosuit last week? Yeah, so I picked up this 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 backpack that had weights in it. You know, it was 30, 35 pounds. You know, I could get it over my head, but it was you know it was strained. And then he activates the springs in the shoulders, and you see the excitement on my face because literally it was like something just forced my hands into the air with this backpack. And so, um, again, as Todd said with the arm, no motors, completely spring-based. And what it's doing is, is as I raise my arms above level, it's giving me more and more potential to raise this backpack. And so think about the, if you've ever had to install a ceiling fan and your arm was over your head for more than about 30 seconds, you know what I'm talking about? Because all of a sudden you realize, like, man, I really need to hit the gym. Because work above your head is one of the most strenuous types that you can possibly do. And in That's fact, awesome. in our industry, and, and y'all's industry as well, overexertion is the number one form of injury. It's from someone trying to do something that they're physically not capable of doing. And according to the Department of Labor, it accounts for $21 billion in loss annually. So it's a, it's a big, big deal in our industries, um, both in construction and in y'all's industries as well. So very exciting stuff. So how do we get our workers to wear this exosuit? It's not going to be overnight, right? <laughs> We're just trying to get them to wear something on their, their hard hat, right? Or, or on their, their wrist. Or it, It's definitely one of those things that Joe and I have learned through different forms of implementation, especially in an industry as old as ours. I mean... We still have paper on our job sites, guys. We're, 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 that's, that's how we built the pyramids. We still build them the same way. But So we, we've understood with digital documents and iPad implementations, you have to create an environment that allows the worker to enter into on his own accord or her. Um, it, it can't be a push. It has to be a pull. So we have been trying to find different ways on ha being able to show the worker the value so this same company, Exobionics, we think has now created that bridge, that stepping stone to starting to get workers into an exoskeleton suit. The rising cost of safety due to on-the-job injuries is killing our productivity. And that's where the ExoWorks aerial system comes in. With the patented zero-gravity arm, the use of heavy hand Remember tools that bionic becomes arm almost we effortless saw? by rendering them weightless. We decided to put the EXO Zero-G arm to the test to see if we could save time and money on the job site by getting the work done faster and protecting the worker from injury and strain. We gave the workers two identical drilling and chipping tasks. Dwayne will use traditional methods, while Ed will be assisted by the EXO Zero-G arm. We will be monitoring the heart rate, time, and progress as both workers complete the task. Keep an eye on the heart rate, heart rate. Heart rate. The results are impressive. The XO Zero G enabled worker finishes all the tasks while the other worker becomes too exhausted in the process. With the assistance of the Zero G arm, the worker completes the task faster and with significantly less effort and fatigue. What so, what if you want, can complete right? your heavy hand tool task faster with better accuracy and less injuries? Now you can with the ExoWorks aerial mount system. So let's not start with a full suit. Let's start with helping them hold that rivet buster that weighs 45 pounds and it takes three guys to rotate the operation of it just so that the work can be performed. Pretty cool? Y'all wanna try it? Yeah. Y'all wanna try it? We brought one. So you're gonna get to try one today after the closing remarks. Uh, right, we actually right. have one outside mounted on a scissor lift for you. Our great friends at United Rental. This isn't sci-fi, guys. This isn't out there. United Rental is renting this now. We're, we're actually renting them out on our job sites. So we think this is going to be the way we bridge the worker forward. When they get that assistance, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, I want to take this with me to my next task. I don't want it to just be mounted to the scissor lift. I want to actually take this over here to the corner of the building where I have to chip out this concrete. And then they're going to ask for it, and we're going to say, we can give you that. You just have to harness this in on your waist, <laughs> <laughs> and it will transfer the energy to the earth. So bridge your workers into the future that you want to become. Thank you for your time. <laughs>